All praise is due to Allah. I praise him. I thank him. I asked him for his help, help and aid. And I also ask him for his forgiveness. And I pray to Allah to forgive all of us. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Without having any partners. Neither father nor son. And I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's slave and his last and final messenger. May Allah send down his peace and mercy upon him, his household, his companions, and upon all those who follow their footsteps until the day of resurrection. <coughs> Dear brothers and sisters, I advise all of you, including myself, to have the taqwa of Allah. And I pray to Allah that Allah make the path of taqwa easy for all of us. As you know, these days, alhamdulillah, most of our hujjaj, they are traveling for hajj. Few of them already have traveled towards the best land on the face of the earth, Makkah al-Mukarramah. And few of them are going today or tomorrow. <coughs> Those who are going to Hajj, it is not a normal journey that you are going to make. The importance of this journey and the respect Allah has paid to this journey. We have to understand it really clearly. If we understand it properly, then we can understand where we are going, what is the purpose of it. People go to invitations, the marriage invitation or walima or a gathering, or some occasion, or sometime the invitation come from respected and <coughs> important person of the society. According to the respect of the person, the inviter, we make preparations. For example, if there is a aqiqah in the masjid, people might come normally. But if there is a marriage, they will have nice clothes and they'll take a little bit more care about it and then they come. But we are going to some higher place, somewhere where all the posh people are going to come or the important people are going to come. So then we take care of the invitation in much more higher manner and we give more importance to that. And in this dunya, when people who have the high status, for example, a high status in the government, or the ruler of the country, or the king or the queen, or the house of lords, if you get invitation from there, subhanallah, you show everybody the invitation. Because that is really important for you. It's one time chance you are going to go to the palace or the house of law and you prepare a lot for that journey to go and meet over there. Imagine those who are going for the Hajj and the Umrah. You cannot compare the invitation of the Hajj and the Umrah with any other invitation. Because the Hajj and the Umrah is so important that it is directly invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Al Hujjaj wal Ummah wafdullah. That the Hujjaj, those who go for the Hajj and those who go to the Umrah, they are the wafdullah, 
They are the guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Da'ahum fa'ajabu. He has called them, invited them, and they have accepted. Subhanallah. So the invitation is not the normal invitation. So the preparation to go to the Hajj, it should not be a normal preparation as you do to go an invitation, any party. But it is much more than that. And alhamdulillah, the people who are going one and two and three times. So it is the great favor of Allah on them that Allah is giving them the chance to come again and again and again. So pay full attention to this journey. This journey is the journey for the sake of Allah. This journey is not that people would call you, oh, this person is a haji sir, because he has done so many hajj. This person is this because every day he goes to the hajj. No, this journey is not to make their status in the society. This journey is not to feel proud among us. This journey is not to show off. As many times as you go to Hajj or Umrah, that's, that much humbleness should come in you. <coughs> that much you should bow down before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should, every trip should change in your life that you go down to earth in every trip more than the last trip. This should be the way when we are going to the Hajj. And when people are giving you the congratulations, congratulations that you are going to the Hajj. It is not normal congratulation. It is not just the culture that they are giving, but they are congratulating you because you are invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you are going there, why you are going? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting you to go and look the inheritance of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. As in one of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that all the mashayr al hajj they are the inheritance of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. Subhanallah, the lesson of the journey starts from now. First you are going to hajj, you are going on the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is not to show off, it is not to feel proud, it is not to make the memories that you can show to your friends, oh that time I went there, I stay in this hotel, I stay like this, I went with first class and think, no, no, it is not for that. The memories has to be between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you had cried, asking forgiveness of Allah so much that you knew, never cried it before. This is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With full sincerity, you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one should know except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This journey are, is for that kind of memories. It is not just to take night to photograph or to make the videography and come back and show to your family and friends. This is not like this. If you are falling in that part, it is not far that you can imagine that people will fall in that one. Easily you can retract like that. Because as you are preparing for your Hajj, Shaitan is also preparing his people to devote you from the cause why you are going there. As you know the Shaitan, the biggest enemy for the human being, as we prepare to go to the Hajj, as we have the gathering of the Hajj, they have the gathering of the Hajj as well. Okay, let's go, you have to devote these people, you have to do this and that. And people, subhanAllah, go there and they don't take any lesson from the Hajj. And we, they come back, so they are same as they were before the Hajj. This journey of the Hajj should be life-changing journey. When you are going and coming back, you are going a normal person, you are coming back a humble person. You are going an ordinary person, when you are coming back, you must have the sense that you recognize your Creator properly. When you are going, you are going a normal person. But when you are coming back, you are down to earth. When you are going, you have your title that you are the Chaudhry or you are the this and you are that. But when you are coming back, there is no difference between all the human beings. Everybody is safe. This should be the journey of the Hajj. And Subhanallah, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, He is the Khalilullah. He is the Khalilullah. He is the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What else you want? What more you want? 
in the honor of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling you to see why Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam called Khalilullah when you go. Allah said to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam is a person, but in one person he is a nation. So a nation of the khulus, a nation who, complete nation as a whole, the sincerity they have, the actions they have, the connection with Allah they have. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, one person had that much and more than that. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, he is the nation. Ibrahim is one, but he is the nation. He has that much connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why he got that connection? What was the things he has done that Allah has prescribed him so much in the Quran? Again and again. Why Allah has mentioned about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. One of the main pillars of Islam is based on the inheritance of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? That journey should open that secret for you. The secret should be open on you when you go there. When you see that tawaf and the sa'i and the jamarat, all this, you should learn why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he is the nation. Dear brothers, <coughs> remember this. When you are going to the Hajj, Allah Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has made really clear for all of us that Al Islam Yahdimu Makana Qabla. Islam is so great that if somebody embraces Islam, all the previous sins will be forgiven. SubhanAllah. All the previous sins will be forgiven. We are a Muslim. <coughs> <coughs> we are Muslim. We don't have the chance to be a Muslim again. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us this chance. Many of us are, <coughs> are the Muslim by default. Our parents were Muslim and we are Muslim. We don't have the chance. But there is another chance. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Al-Hijra tahdimu ma kana qabla. If somebody has migrated for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from one place where he cannot worship Allah properly, where he cannot do the sha'ayr of Islam, the, the place of Islam, he cannot practice it properly, so he leaves that place and he go to another place where he can worship Allah and he is doing this for the sake of Allah only. Not to earn the money, not to do any worldly things, just for the sake of Allah. All the previous sins will be for you. And then the third thing our beloved Prophet وسلم, said that Hajj, the Hajj will finish all your previous sins. That's why our beloved Prophet وسلم, said, whoever go to the Hajj, whoever go to the Hajj, فَلَا وَرَفَسَ وَلَا فُسُوخَ وَلَا جِدَادِ He didn't do any foolish thing. He didn't use any bad tongue over there. He did not fight with anybody. <coughs> He will return from the Hajj as his mother has given him birth just now. Subhanallah, this is the great chance we have. When you will get that reward, you will get that reward when you go to the Hajj with the intention and with the actions according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. Not to show off, not that, oh, I am so young, I am going to Hajj, people should respect me more. No. Subhanallah, you should thank Allah to extra rakah by performing to extra rakah. Why? You are so young and Allah has called you for the job, for the invitation. You should do something more. Because normally all the time, everybody wants to go there. But if you are young, you and Allah has given you this chance, pray to rakah extra. But don't bring the pride in you. Dear brothers, <laughs> those who are going to Hajj, I congratulate all of them. And those who want to go Hajj, I pray that Allah make the task easy for them. And brothers, whoever is going to the Hajj, a special request from this member. For this member, that you don't forget your masjid in your du'a. When you are going there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited you. Your du'as, between your du'a and the acceptance, there is nothing. Except you have to say and Allah will accept it. So don't forget the dua for your masjid. 
that Allah make the task of the new mosque easy for all of us and make this place a station of the hidayah, the guidance, not only for the Muslims of Newcastle and non-Muslims of Newcastle, but for the whole Northeast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this task easy for us. And those brothers who are not going to the Hajj and they are staying over here, subhanallah, don't worry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really, really Rahim. He is Rahim. He is most merciful. He grants the chances to you to gain a great reward as well. In the Quran, <coughs> In Surah Al-Fajr, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَالْفَجْرُ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرُ وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوَتْرُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says by the dawn, the time of the Fajr and by the ten days subhanallah, what are these ten days? These ten days are the ten days of Dhul Hijjah the last month of Islamic calendar which we are going to hit in this week, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great. He never swear by anything except that is great as well. Because al Azim la yuqsimu bil Azim. Azim, the great, he cannot swear by anything which is less. He has to swear by something which has honor as well. So these days, 10 days, it has a lot of honor. Ninth day, is the day of Arafah, which is Witr, the day of Arafah. And what is the day of Arafah, subhanAllah? The day of Arafah is the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants the freedom from the hellfire to so many people that there is no other day can come and compare that day. SubhanAllah, what we have to do? We have to make a lot of dua. The hujjad are standing there from Zawal till sunset and making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to do that. And if you are not on the Hajj, you are here. So the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu salam said that whoever fasts the day of Arafah, whoever fasts the day of Arafah, I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive their previous year sins as well as the coming year sins as well. Subhanallah, one year in the past and one year the future. All the minor sins which you do, you will be forgiven. If you Pay attention and fast at that day. Remember, 9th of the Hijjah, day of Arafah, we all have to make dua. We all have to fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only that, then the 10th day is the Yawm al -Nahab. You have to slaughter the animal for the sake of Allah. Subhanallah, brothers. The slaughtering animal is not the sadaqah. It is not the sadaqah that as you pay the sadaqah in Ramadan, you give money to the poor people. It is not like this. It is one of the great signs of Islam that you are slaughtering the animal with the intention that this is not the animal which I am slaughtering, but tomorrow or today if I have to slaughter myself or my own children, I would do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that intention, you have to do the slaughtering of animal because this is the inheritance of Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. What Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam did? On the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asked his son. The son was agreed. And the boat, the, the father was slaughtering the son and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced with land. So what is that? Subhanallah, that is the dhabiha. That is the dhabiha which we do. So it is not the charity. So everybody should try to do here as well. If you speak to the people, they will take you, you can do, you, at least you can watch. It takes time, indeed it takes time. It is hard, indeed it is harder than your countries. It is, but to gain that sort of sense, to, to get that shaur, to get that iman inside, you have to at least watch it. If you can do that, you can watch it. If you have to pay four or five hours extra, do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in these 10 days, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said that there are no other days in honor and respect compared to these 10 days. <coughs> Sahaba asked, O Prophet of Allah, what about the jihad? 
when people go and fight and die. The jihad, the meaning of fighting, it was not in general putting efforts. So the Prophet wasallam said, even the jihad doesn't compare the reward of these 10 days, the ibadah which you do in these 10 days, even the jihad, except one jihad. A person left his house, his wealth, everything, and he went, he never come back. The meaning of that is he got martyred. He has no more right. But other than that, all the other actions are after the actions of these 10 days. So remember, take care of these 10 days, which we are going to start in this week, inshallah, in a couple of days, four, five days. What you have to do? We have to increase in our tilawah of the Quran. We have to increase in the tilawah of the Quran. Make task every day you pray, you read three pages, three just you can finish the Quran. You have to pray more nawafi. Come early to the masjid, pray. After the salat, pray more. Give more sadaqah. Fast as many days as you can. Because the fasting brings you closer to Allah and keep you away from the hellfire. And many more actions which you do, like being nice to your parents, be extra nice to your parents in these 10 days. Because Lord of reward is there. So I pray to Allah that Allah accept the Hajj of those who are going to the Hajj. And Allah make their journey easy for them. And those who are intending to go, Allah make the path easy for them. And those who are not going to the Hajj, Allah grant them the ability to look after the 10 days of Dil Hijjah and do a lot of Ibadah in it. <laughs> إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى ما وعلى ما بعد. Dear brothers, إن شاء الله in our masjid we are going to conduct a training program for all of us where you can learn few skills how to give the دعوة to the non-Muslims. So when people are going to the Hajj, many people are going, everybody knows many people are taking off. You can make this as an opportunity to give the da'wah towards Islam. So a lot of skills you will learn, inshallah. So this Sunday we are conducting the da'wah training program. I urge the brothers and the sisters to take part in it, learn something about the da'wah. Because if one person embraces Islam, if you go to the Hajj, the whole reward of the Hajj is in your favor as well. If many people embrace Islam from him, all reward will come to you as well. So spare some time and do learn some skills of da'wah. So we are conducting that. And our beloved Prophet says that if one person embraces Islam in your hand, it is better than the best wealth you can imagine of your time. Because at the time of the Quraysh, the best wealth was the red camels. If somebody had the red camels, that was the best wealth. So this time, whatever best wealth you think, if one person embraces Islam in your hand, it is better than that best wealth. I pray to Allah, Allah grant us to do da'wah for his cause. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiya yuhladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallim taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim anna ka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barik ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim anna ka hamidu majid. Ibad Allah rahimani wa rahimakum Allah. Inna Allah ya'amu bin adli wa lihsani wa itai dil qurba. Wa yanha'ani al-fahshai wa al-mankari wa al-fadhi'i 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 wa al-fadhi'i